What's going on, everybody? Um, in the garage, uh, I just pulled the camera out of the house, so you're probably seeing. I'm looking at my little lens here or my area, but you're looking, probably going to see a bunch of fog or some weird light um, reflections. It's just the camera's uh, reflecting pretty weird. So, what I wanted to go over today was what's happened since um, I made this announcement. Uh, these videos are going to be a little sporadic. I'm, I'm learning myself again. So uh, they're going to be a little sporadic and not going to be a constant daily up, or did not daily, but a constant uh, videos as I go through processes and wait for things to come in. Um, but I'm making these videos kind of in series and then I'll put them out there as I go. So let's 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 talk about where I'm at now, right? In the last video, we talked about me switching to Link ECU, and that's what I've done. Um, unfortunately, since uh, for the past week or so, I actually had to return the item that I purchased. Um, I got a good deal on it. It was open box, um, but unfortunately, um, B pin B25 on the uh, on the actual board, which is the same pin on the OEM board. Uh, that's what outputs the fan signal for one of the fans. I guess in my year of the Subaru, each fan's different. You have an engine fan and a coolant fan or an AC fan. Um, so the engine fan wasn't coming on, but the AC fan was. So there was something wrong with that board or whatever. So. I didn't want to go through the process of repairing it, so I returned it because of the situation of being open box. They took it back, and I purchased a new one. So that should be here in for a couple, be here in a couple days, and I should be able to get that back in and just reflash the tune I had. Um, but for now, what I'm getting ready is, uh, is a few different things. Um, I wanted to redo the wiring in the car, uh, as far as all my gauges go and all my power stuff. I wanted to redo that because it was just a it was just a mess for me to deal with. And then I'm going to install a new can bus um, and this camera's getting crazy a new can bus um, wideband adapter so let me let me fill you in all right so the car is kind of tore apart and uh yeah this is an interesting like glow that this uh okay so up here was where my wire mess was. I've cleaned it up a whole lot compared to what it used to be. So uh, be nice what you do see. Um, I got my gauges set back up. So my oil pressure, my oil, oil temp, and uh, EGT when that's set up. I'll keep my wide band of there and my boost over there. Um, so that stuff will stay there. And then uh, down here, back obviously behind this will be the ECU. Um, so right now I'm actually just wiring in these would be my two can wires and then I have my two ground and uh, other wire there so let me show you what that what that device is right okay I went back and swapped out um, it is hot in Florida I went back and swapped out to a different lens so this one be better so again back to the wideband sensor we all know what this guy is this is what I'm installing um, I currently have a wideband sensor installed an AM uh, wideband <coughs> excuse me hooked up to the um, flashlight sensor. wide the flashlight out so uh, the uh, wide bands hooked up to the downpipe um, and that's where it's been forever that's what I've always done my tuning on so with this link ECU system I had to go and purchase something called a uh, a can lambda so that's what this is G4 can lambda um, basically can being the connection type and lambda obviously being air fuel ratio um, and I have to hook it up so Along with this whole setup here, right, you have to get this cable here. So this cable here, this side hooks up into the ECU, um, and then this is the standard connection type. I don't really know much about it. I don't know if this is a standard um, connection for, um, it's like a twist. You twist it here, it then pops off. So you have all the pins inside. Hopefully that focuses not on my face. Um, let me lower the brightness down. So this is what you would normally get. So this connection here is what's going to make uh, everything work. So hook up ECU, hook up to the other side wire. These wires are then going to run to the um, this wire here. It's going to run to the uh, device, and that device is this lovely guy right here. So can lambda link. Basically, it's kind of just like the um, uh, ethanol sensor you know device you have to mount to your car and then you get your two plugs right you get your oxygen sensor plug which is pretty normal 
and then you get your can plug, which I guess this this certain plug right here is pretty standard. So basically, that's what that's what I'm doing. That's what's going on. Um, I uh, I have to get this new item hooked up and um, installed before that Link ECU actually comes in. Uh, the downside with this is I actually have to do some wiring, some pinning that I've never actually done. So you have this little guide here and all these different pins that I have to solder. Um, and then with this di wiring diagram here that you have to follow, um, I have to wire up uh, this, these four pins for power and, and the can signal. So uh, creating these little, you know, creating this kind of connection, I've never done. You know, it seems easy, but there's a lot of little components inside that you have to do. So let me, let me show you. So I just did one real quick, um, one or two of them. I think it's right here. So you actually have to create that pin, that uh, piece that plugs in, and then you have to slide it into the actual um, plug itself. So this is what I'm actually going to do. That's what I'm trying to do right now. So um, I guess I'll, I'll, write a, I'll do a video of that because it's actually pretty nice to know because it took me a while to figure it out. Um, and then we'll get that we'll get that hooked up. It's, uh, it's a process. Um, it's going to be a little annoying. Um, the reason I had to do this, that's probably a good thing to go over. So I had to get this can lambda here um, mainly because with a standalone ECU, right, uh, the ECU itself is now going to use a wideband to control everything when it comes to your fueling. Um, on a stock car, no matter what the car is, you usually have your front um, oxygen sensor, which is narrowband that comes right out of the exhaust header. And then some cars have two, three, or even four um, oxygen sensors down the line. Um, like in my case, for my specific car, I think most Subarus have at least two. I have another one in the mid pipe area after the uh, Cadillac converter. And that kind of helps with some closed loop trim on a, on a small, small level. Um, that front oxygen sensor is a narrow band and it reads um, plus or minus like one lambda or plus or minus like one AFR, so like 13.5 to 15.5 or something like that. It's a very small number. But that small one in the very back, the rear oxygen sensor only reads at like zero to one volt. So it, all it looks at is to see, are you richer or are you leaner than 14.7 and makes adjustments. It doesn't care about the number. Um, so I got rid of that, right? We don't need that part. So in order to, to do what you have to do with a standalone, what I'm learning to do is, uh, or figure out, is that you have to use a wideband sensor. A wideband sensor controls everything, like I said, in, in how the fueling works. So where the car would use that, that narrow front band, the standalone, the stock ECU would use that front na narrow band, the uh, standalone is going to use a wide band where you install it. So you literally are removing everything that the car would normally do, fueling wise, and making it in your own, which I didn't really understood that. When I got this ECU, I kind of thought it would still use that front oxygen sensor, at least for closed loop stuff. But um, once I started learning more about it and, and learning more about the standalone, um, I realized that it would use the wide band and it was better because it would be closed loop throughout the whole entire band of power where we're used to just like you know up to a few pounds of boost closed loop would be there and then open loop would take over um, and then you'd just be on your own controlling fuel but with a standalone you can have closed loop all the way through full throttle and it can actually make adjustments so it's good but also scary because if it pulls too much fuel and you run stupid lean, that's kind of the things you have to put into place to protect. But I needed to buy this device. I bought this device because the AEM uh, air fuel gauge that I have and the Innovate air fuel gauge I have, both of those devices are just too slow and their readings are too far off to be accurate to control fueling all the time. And just, it worries me, and it's just a not a recommended thing. Although it's available, you can do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just, do you want to put your expensive car in the trust of that device? So uh, the reason why they came up with this is in the cam signal, it's digital. So there will be no interference in that signal. So you'll get the exact readings as fast as they can push them. Um, and uh, if you're taking like an AEM or that Linovate gauge, you're using one wire called analog outwire. Um, that feeds zero to five volts to whatever. I mean, in this case, it could be your laptop. It could be another, you know, RS-232 um, serial port. Uh, it could be, you know, whatever you want. 
In this case, the ECU will take in that, that 0 to 5 volt analog, and then you just give it a calibration table, which all manufacturers of wide bands give you a table to calibrate with. Um, and then it reads from there. But unfortunately, that, that there's a delay. There's, you know, it's not accurate. In my case, it's off by 0.3. So where I'm supposed to be sitting at, let's say, 14.7, I'm actually, the uh, gauge reads 14.7, but the ECU is seeing 15 or 14.4. So that's, that's not good enough for me. So this device is supposed to take care of that and make things much better. It was expensive. Um, uh, I don't think this was the expensive part, although this should have been the expensive part because it's like a sealed little computer brain part in there. I think this is what got expensive, just the wide band. These wide bands go for 60, 70 bucks maybe on Amazon, brand new for a Bosch 4.9. I think they're trying to, they sell these for like 180 bucks. Um, and unfortunately you have to buy their branded kit, which comes with this device. Um, it's not just a third party kit or anything, it's an actual link ECU kit. But um, it's okay, uh, I did pay a lot more for the ECU and I did pay a lot for this device, but um, the reason I went with Link is because of their support and the huge community behind it, and their support has been amazing. I will tell you, it's been very simple. Um, I've even talked to some of the local techs that work here in the United States for the device, because this being a New Zealand ECU, um, and I'm probably talking like crazy fast right now, got everything in my head, but... Um, they, they were just great to call up, call up directly, no work, no middleman to go through or something. You just call this direct number and the guy's like, hey, if you got a problem with it, send it to me. I'll take a look at it for you. So, yeah, here we go. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually pin one of those wires just so people can see it um, in case you have to do it. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what I'm doing. All right, so here's the wire here. Um, hopefully you can see it. I don't wanna uh, zoom in too much with it. You got your typical um, wire uh, snippers with your stripper here. Just gonna pull a little bit off that wire. I'm gonna wind it up. Twist the wire a little bit. And then you're gonna grab your clip. This is the clip I was telling you about here. The, um, these wings that you see are what are going to fold down and this device here is what's going to crimp it so I'm going to try my best to uh, to show you how this works so in this case we're just going to uh, slide the wire inside and you basically want to get that in this case this yellow part just into that first clip and then you have all these different notches right so I'm going to go for that circle notch on the top and I'm going to start bending the wire. So we'll put it inside. I'll crimp down a little bit and I'll start bending it. And I, of course, dropped the uh, pin. <laughs> 